Good morning. It is 5.30 a.m. on a Saturday morning here in London. I'm here at Earl's Court. It's almost empty. Unheard of, at least for me, but I'm not from London. I'm not even from the UK. So, um, what we're doing in this video. Are we traveling to Brighton? I first I thought it would be on a southern surface because I take the train from Victoria Station. But apparently, uh, the train that I'll be taking is the Gatwick Express. What is an express train? What is a faster surface? So I think it should be a bit higher ranked as well. It should be a premier surface. Um, we'll find out in this video what I do in this video. I first show you the railway station of London, Victoria. Then I show you the train. And at the end, I will show you some views from the train. I'll also tell you a little bit more about, well, fares, etc. I hope you like this video or this is a helpful video. If so, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more trip reports about a more sustainable way of transportation, mainly train, but also ferry and long distance buses, subscribe to the channel. But for now, let's roll the intro. London Victoria is one of the busiest railway stations in London. It's not serving a lot of intercity trains. However, it's also known for a London Victoria coach station. As a kid, I used to travel pretty often by bus with my parents. And I also went pretty often to London by Eurolines bus. And that was all from Victoria coach station. So I was curious and just had a quick look over here. It's about a five minute walk from the Victoria railway station. And this coach station is huge. From here on you won't only find buses to lots of places in the UK, but also lots of international buses to all different places within Europe. Anyway, a deeper station review of Victoria Coach Station might be interesting for another time. For now, I'll go back to Victoria Railway Station. Victoria Railway Station is the second busiest railway station in the UK and also within London. Integrated within this railway station, there's a small shopping mall called Victoria Place. It's not that big over here. And at the moment I was here on an early Saturday morning, everything was still closed. A taxi stand is located at the side of this mall. And you won't only find a taxi stand over here, but also a parking spot for cars. And there are even some bicycle racks, so you can park your bike over here. Anyway, let's go to the real railway station, because this is where this video is about. As I mentioned in the introduction, I arrived here with the underground. There are two stations for the underground. One that's using the district line and the circle line, and there's a newer deeper station for the Victoria line. Within the underground, there are lots of vending machines for tickets as well and directions are given very clear. At the front of the railway station, there's another taxi stand. And of course, there's also a bus stop for city buses at this spot. Personally, I really like the front of the railway station and the railway station building. It's been built by Southern Railway and this is also mentioned at the facade. This is a terminal station, so therefore the layout is pretty straightforward. At the end of the railway tracks, you will find the main course. And over here, you find lots of shops, railway related services, but also places where you can buy some food and drinks for your journey. Although you never ever make a long railway journey if you're departing from here. Information about departures has been very clearly given at these screens you can see here at the right. Apart from the clear departure screens, directions are given in general very well throughout this railway station. As you might see over here. For the departure screens, the Gatwick Express had its own departure screen. So this looks like quite a premium product. Just like in most bigger British railway stations, you will find access gates to the platforms. I'll get back to this a little bit later on. The Gatwick Express trains do depart from the platforms with the higher platform numbers and there's actually a separate entrance for these trains. Within the railway station building, there are lots of places where you can wait by the way. But since most trains are really commuter trains over here, you don't have to wait that long. And as you can see here, there is a own entrance for the Gatwick Express trains that will depart from 
track number 13 and 14. For this trip I was using a Brit Rail Pass because I was doing quite a lot of trips within the UK. There's a QR code on my ticket and the gates did not open with my QR code. So staff is there available to assist you. This is in general in bigger British railway stations. So if you are having trouble with opening the gates or you don't know how to use it, in general there's staff available to assist you and I think this is really good. And this here on the left is my train for today that will take me to Brighton via Gatwick Airport. It's a British Railway Class 387 Electrostar. The top speed is 177 km per hour or 110 miles per hour. For the Brighton Main Line where we'll be traveling along today, the electricity will come from a third rail at the side of the tracks and this is only 750 volts. Therefore, the top speed for this train today will only be 140 km per hour, what is about 90 miles per hour. The train for today existed of two electrical multiple units. I'll do a walkthrough of the train later on. The exterior is pretty simple. There's something mentioned as first class and about the first class I already give you a spoiler alert on this because this is one of the most disappointing first class sections I ever saw on a train. It's really not worth buying first class tickets. At the front, the back and at several spots at the side basic route information will be given on LED screens. But for now I think it's time to take a closer look at the interior of these trains. This is an airport express. Personally I'm not flying that much and especially not within Europe because of environmental reasons. But for an airport express I found the amount of luggage storage quite disappointing. There are some luggage racks at the beginning and the end of some compartments and of course you will find the overhead luggage racks. But that's basically it. There's not a whole lot of it and for an airport express I just expect some more space for luggage. What is a very good thing though is that announcements are being made automatically in several languages. In a way I think this is a good thing because well if you're known with my videos you know that if information is not very good in English I'm complaining about it in other countries. However I also think that in British trains and railway stations they can do a bit more effort to make information understandable to people who don't speak that well English. And I already expect people to make a comment on this saying that this is the UK and people just should speak English. However, I think it's good when travel information and especially on international and long distance routes is available in more languages. The toilets, well they look like this, these are the regular toilets and you'll find plenty of them. And now we go to the first class. And this is the first class. Basically it's exactly the same as the second class, however you will find a headrest and that's it. Really disappointing in my opinion. Within these trains there is no dining car and you can't reserve seats. As you can see over here you can walk from one train set to the other train set and you hardly even notice it. Line maps will be displayed above the entrance doors at one side. Before I'll give you a seat tour I'll do a toilet tour of the accessible toilet you find in these trains. For passengers traveling in a wheelchair there's some extra space near the accessible toilets, what is quite obvious. I didn't notice any spots where you can park bikes within these trains by the way. Anyway, this is the interior of the accessible toilets. These toilets can also be turned into a nursery space for babies. For now let's do a seat tour, and I don't mean a toilet seat, just a regular seat. For the airline style seats there are very small tray tables in the seat in front. At the side there's a power plug and reading lights are integrated within the luggage racks. This is something I didn't notice at other trains along this route. The leg space is relatively okay and I'm a very tall guy. There are no sunscreens and coat hangers can be found right next to the windows of these trains. Just like in most trains, free Wi-Fi is available. It's just an internet connection though and the speed is not really fast. 
but it's free and it's unlimited and it's really nice that it's there. Let's take a closer look at the route of our train today. The network map is listed above and this is the route for the train today. The travel time is about one hour. It's about 30 minutes from London to Gatwick Airport and another 30 minutes to Brighton. Apart from these trains from and to Gatwick Airport, you will also find Thameslink trains and Southern trains. I do have a trip report on a Thameslink train as well on the route Brighton, London, Cambridge. Before I'll show you some views from the train, if you are interested in other trip reports I did, in the description of this video on YouTube there's a link to a map and on this map you can find all trip reports. The lines do indicate the routes, the train, ferry and bus icons do indicate the railway station, ferry terminal or bus station reviews. This channel is mainly about long distance and international train traveling. For now, I'll show you some views from the train between London Victoria and Brighton via Gatwick Airport. So welcome to Brighton, that's it for this video. For a premium express service I found the comfort level not that good. Um, for an airport express I would also expect a little bit more luggage space. Um, however as a fast express service between Brighton and London I think this is a good train. From here on I will take a Thames link back to London that continues actually to um, Cambridge. Um, so I also make a video on that so you can compare these trains as well. Once again, I hope this was a helpful video to you or you liked it. If so, please give me a thumbs up on YouTube. If you have any questions or even if you just want to say hello, leave a comment. And if you'd like to see more trip reports about a more sustainable way of transportation, so mainly trains, sometimes ferries and sometimes long distance buses, subscribe to the channel. See you on my next video.